Hey guys, it's Lisa here. And in today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating for all of you how to create those um, etiquette posters or expectation posters for synchronous learning, whether you're using Zoom, whether you're using Google Meets or Microsoft Teams. This is a great way and a great free resource and website to use to create those posters. Now you could use them for this, you could use them for um, precautions, you know, making sure students cover their mouth, wash their hands, uh, especially with everything going on right now. The possibilities are endless. So if you have resources that you want to create for your classroom, such as posters, uh, the website that I am going to recommend to all of you is called PictoChart. Okay, um, so this is an example of one that I did, just, you know, keeping the mic muted and uh, keeping your video on, being on time for, for the online synchronous learning. Okay, these are just examples of things that you could do. Okay, but why not create one yourself? Okay. And I'm going to show all of you how to do that. So to get to PictoChart, okay, you can Google it or you could just go to PictoChart.com. Okay, if you're not sure, Google is always a safe bet because the first one that'll pop up is going to be the website. Now, once you get here, this is what it looks like. Okay, I already have an account, so I do not need to sign up. But if you need to, this is where you would do that. And it just asks for some basic information, um, like what do you, what is your your position in your job. Uh, obviously, for a lot of you, it's going to be teacher, um, your email, your email that you want to associate with your account. And then once you do that, uh, and you're able to log in, this is what the dashboard looks like. Okay, so these are the options that you're going to have. Okay, you see here is the Zoom expectation chart that I had just shown to all of you. Okay, and then you can come up here to create new. Okay, these are your options. Okay, if you want to do some presentations or reports, flyers, you want to broadcast your social media. Okay, but for today's tutorial, I'm going to be using the posters. Okay, so they have a bunch of great templates that you can use and then customize yourself. Okay, so basically you can, you can change these almost indefinitely. Okay, so because I really like the one with the lines, okay, this is for protective measures. Uh, we're not going to be using it for that, but this is what I actually use. So once you hover over the template, it gives you the option to preview or to use template. So I'm going to click use template. Okay, and then this is going to pop up and I'm going to show you ways that you are able to modify it to create whatever you need for your classroom. Okay, so first things first, I want to get rid of all this stuff. Uh, a great feature on this website is that Kind of similar to Google um, Google Slides, I can hover over a bunch of things at once and delete more than one thing at a time, which is beautiful because it does definitely save you some time, and that's can't put a price on that. So once I delete these things, and then if you wanted to, you could leave this text box here. So I could leave the text box and just highlight what's in it. Okay, and once you delete everything out of the text box though, it's going to delete it. So it's just so, um, you know, word of advice. If you plan on just replacing, don't delete everything. Okay, maybe just leave like one letter in there. For me, I'm just gonna delete everything because I wanna show all of you how to add the text boxes. Okay, perfect. I think that everything is gone. It is. All right, fantastic. So the first thing, if I'm not happy with the way that the color scheme is going here, um, over on the left on the menu, there is an option here. You click the little palette icon that says color scheme underneath it. And I could go ahead and I could change the color scheme of this poster to, you know, a bunch of, a bunch of different things. Okay, I can even If I had the paid version, I could go ahead and I could level up and I could create my own color scheme, but I'm pretty happy with the turquoise one. I really like this color a lot. This is what I used in, for my example. Okay, so I'm going to keep that. Now, the next thing is that I had gone through uh, the Bitmoji app in advance for the extension here, if you want to do that. And I had found Bitmojis that I knew that I was going to use for this project and I had downloaded them to my computer. I saved them right to my computer because from there, once you have done that, you know, unfortunately you can't just drag, drag and drop them into 
the poster the way you can in Google Slides. So it does add an extra step, but it's really not that big of a deal. So once you have those saved on your computer and the way you do that is just by, um, like if this is the one that I wanted, I'm gonna right click and then I'm just gonna save image as and it'll save it to my computer. You can save them to a folder or desktop if you want, whatever's easiest. And then you're gonna come over to the menu on the left and you're going to click where it says uploads. Now, the great thing about this website is that with the free account, you can save 40 megabytes of images. So all of the images that I had uploaded that I thought I might use for this project, and I didn't use all of them, but I already have them here, which is really great. Otherwise, I would have to click where it says browse images and then choose a file from my computer. Okay, but because I have them here, it's just gonna save us a little bit of time. Okay, and then over on the side, I think I used on the top, let's see, hello. And then similar to using the Bitmoji extension in Google Slides, once they're uploaded to your account, you can just left click and then drag them right over, which is beautiful. Okay, so that was the first thing that I did. Okay, now to add those text boxes. So right here, you have a text box, okay? And I'm going to add a title. So you can click out and then re-click the image so that this way you can move it, okay? I'm gonna highlight what's in here so that I can delete it. And I wrote Zoom Expectations. Okay, and then there are tons of options up here. Okay, if I want that font to be bigger, what's beautiful is, is that you can just hover over and kind of get a, uh, a preview of what the size is gonna look like before you actually click it. I can then go ahead and, oh, I can then go ahead and bold this. I can change the color, which I did on my example that I did. Okay, there we go. Okay, I would like to have this even a little bit bigger. All right, perfect. So there we go, zoom expectations. I have my Bitmoji at the top and now moving down to the bottom. So the lines are already here, but if you wanted them a little longer, you just have to click on them and then you would expand these or, or shrink them the same way what you would with lines in uh, Google Slides. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna go back to where it says my uploads, because that's where we get our images from that we have already uploaded to the site. Uh, another suggestion, and it's just a suggestion, I suggest you kind of upload and get ready, get all of your, your photos that you wanna use uploaded to the site before you start to create. Because when you're in that mode and you're already uploading all your photos, you know, you don't have to keep going back and forth later on. And it definitely made my, my project go a lot faster. And then, like I said, you just go, okay, and then I can go ahead and I can shrink this and I can move. my photos around and add another text box. So here, body text, remember to click out and then re-click back in, okay? And another great thing is you see that the, the orange boxes that's popping up um, over top of the image above and then the line, these are your guidelines. So just like in, in Google Slides where the red lines pop up to let you know if something is centered, okay? Um, this website also has the same thing, which is, which is awesome. Okay, and then here I can type, um, you know, to be in a room with good lighting, um, make sure camera is on and lighting is good. Okay, whatever you wanna write there. And again, the same, same goes for the body text box that I just added, I can go, ahead and I can change the size, okay, until it fits nicely. I can go ahead and I can center that, which is beautiful, bold it. I can even change the font, okay? So like I said, there are a lot of different options that you can use when, when making these. Uh, something else that I found was, where 
where is it? Okay, um, up here in graphics. So if there were shapes that I wanted to add, okay, they have different shapes. So I could add stars or boxes, okay. They have illustrations, so they have some pre-made, like kind of like a clip art catalog here that you can access as well. Okay, if I wanted to add more lines. Oh. Here we go. There we go, and there's a line. And I can go up and I can change the color of the line. Okay, so once you're in anything, these are your options at the top. That's, that's where your options to format any images are going to appear. Okay, and then there is, uh, you can search for photos, they have those as well. And then the last thing on the menu that pops up is a photo frame. So if I had a photo, or if I wanted to add a frame around the image here, okay, these are different options that I have. Okay, so like I said, there are tons, there's even, there's even these where you can add a face to the little bodies that are here. It's a lot of fun. So once you have completed everything and you're happy with the way your poster looks, okay, you can even add another line, which I did for my example. So I just moved this line up, okay? And then I can even control V, control, uh, control C, control V, or command C, command V if you're on a Mac to duplicate the line. And that's how I ended up with the nine boxes in mind. If you only have six, then like I said, it's just easier to go ahead and create your own because then it's exactly the way that you want it. Okay, I can always go to preview okay, and it'll show me what it's going to look like, my finished product. Okay, and then I can exit preview. And once I'm all done, I can hit download. Okay, I'm going to download my options. Okay, without having to pay, I would keep it either medium quality because it's the highest that you can go for free and then leave it as a png and then i'm going to download as a png and you'll see that it's going to download to my computer it'll probably pop up down here at the bottom there it goes okay it popped up and then from there you can like i said in the beginning of the video you can go ahead and you can show this at the beginning of your synchronous learning lessons just to remind students Okay, you can post this to your Google Classroom in materials as a reminder. Um, it's just that you can put it in your slides each, you know, for each day. It, it really depends on what works best for you and it depends on the way that you are implementing synchronous learning with your students. So I really hope that this video helped all of you. I hope you have a lot of fun using PictoChart to create your posters and resources for your classroom. If you have questions, comment down below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and click that notification bell because, bell because you definitely do not want to miss my future videos. Take care, everyone.